What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We are here once again with some more NFL preseason DFS picks and lineup advice for DraftKings and FanDuel. This time for the Friday, August 25th, three-game slate. Welcome. I'm Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. If you've been watching these videos all preseason, you know the drill, what we do here. We give out some top plays. We try to hit each position, the core plays that we think have the best chance of success. And generally, these players end up with the highest ownership in DFS contests. And if you're not considering them whatsoever, well, you've come to the right place because if you're not considering them, uh, there's not a real chance that you're going to cash in those contests. But I'm going to try to hit on a couple of those plays today and then maybe give you a couple low-owned, high-risk GPP plays at the end of the video. A word of caution, though, preseason week three, we do see a lot of uncertainty. However, looking around the industry, looking at even some of the player lines on underdog pick em, we feel that we have a pretty big edge, as we usually do with our research and our playing time trends. So uh, let's jump into it. And let's start at the quarterback position. Now, there's one piece of news that we are especially looking for today, and it's out of Tennessee. If you played preseason DFS last week, you know that Will Levis, the rookie, missed last week's game due to injury. Malik Willis played the entire game. We told you basically to play him in pretty much every lineup. And while he didn't set the world on fire, 13, 14 points is a ton of points at quarterback in preseason DFS. So Willis, even though he was really highly owned, was someone you had to have last week. That could be the case once again this week. We're still waiting on reports on Levis's availability here. Levis did return to practice. Some reporters think he's going to play. Some think he should be held out. We have reports that Ryan Tannehill could play one to two series. If Levis is out, that means we get Malik Willis for three-plus quarters once again. And looking at the other quarterbacks on the slate, no other quarterback should approach that. And once again, we would just lock Malik Willis into our lineups. Now, if Levis does play, this goes to show how one piece of news can really impact the entire slate. If Levis is out, that means we have to play Malik Willis. If Levis is in... That means that the quarterback position really doesn't matter for your lineups tonight. And I know that sounds crazy to say, especially if you if you played regular season DFS. But we have multiple, multiple quarterbacks that are going to play a half tonight, probably. For Detroit, we likely have Nate Sudfield playing a half. For Carolina, we likely have Matt Corral playing a half. For New England, we likely have... Bailey Zappi playing a half. We could have Malik Cunningham play a half. It sounds like Mac Jones will not play tonight, just reading between the lines uh, and what the reporters are saying out of New England. Uh, and then for the Chargers, <laughs> I know what happened last week, but we should get Easton Stick and Max Dugan a half once again, like they did in preseason week one. And then for San Francisco, the playing time should be pretty fractured here with all four quarterbacks likely seeing the field. Yes, even Trey Lance. So if Willis is in, we're playing him heavily. If he's not, Honestly, it doesn't matter too much. As long as you play one of the guys getting a half, you get those four to eight points, four to ten points. It's not going to make or break your lineup. I know uh, we've had some people complain on our videos in the past. Oh, my quarterback only scored four points. I promise. I've won 20K plus with a quarterback scoring four points in preseason DFS. It will not matter tonight if Malik Willis and Will Levis split time. Moving on to running back. Uh, if you remember last week as well, we gave out Julius Chestnut as a top play. Uh, for some reason, the field wasn't on him. They didn't recognize that Tennessee would be shorthanded in their backfield. That's going to be the case once again tonight. Derrick Henry is going to rest. Hassan Haskins, Jonathan Ward both did not practice once again this week after not practicing last week and missing last week's game. That leaves just Tajay Spears, Julius Chestnut, and Jock Patrick in the backfield. Now, Jock Patrick could get a little more work this week. If we're looking back last week at, uh, I'm just looking through our numbers here on the back end. And we saw last week, Jock Patrick did play 24% of the snaps, which was pretty high considering he had just got signed that week. But Julius Chestnut still played 52%. Tajay Spears is a guy that they're going to play in the regular season as well. He played just 22%. That was consistent with what he played in preseason week one. So once again, with just these three guys active, we expect Julius Chestnut to play a majority of the snaps. He should be popular, and he's a core play tonight, Julius Chestnut. If you're playing larger contests, you're looking to get different. Uh, consider Jock Patrick. There's a chance that he plays more than he did last week, plays a quarter and a half, maybe even a half. Uh, so Jock Patrick, a very sneaky, high-risk play that no one's really going to play on this three-game slate. Other running backs that we like. Let's go to, how about New England? Let me get a drink here. Let's clear these guys out of the lineup. And at running back, Ramondre Stevenson likely to rest tonight. But we do have five other guys on the team. J.J. Taylor has led the team in snaps. Typically, New England, whoever leads in snaps preseason week one and preseason week two, leads again in preseason week three, which leads us to believe that J.J. Taylor will be the guy. He's talented. 
uh, high yards per touch, leads the team in yards per touch this preseason. But Zeke could play some tonight. Pierre Strong could return tonight. C.J. Marable, who they signed last week, didn't play. But Bill Belichick in the past has had some games where he's just ran out the last end of the roster running back for a ton of snaps in the last preseason game. So it wouldn't surprise us there. So we think Taylor will be popular. He's a guy that we like. Uh, but there is some uncertainty to his playing time tonight, J.J. Taylor. Uh, let's leave the guys who we like in our lineup tonight just so you guys can – Keep a reminder of who we have as the top plays. Uh, again, I'm recording this at 11 a.m. Eastern on Friday, uh, and this is assuredly going to change as we get news throughout the afternoon, but this is the early look for tonight's slate. Uh, one other running back that we like, who do we got here? We're going to say Craig Reynolds for Detroit. Played basically a half last week. Uh, didn't play in preseason week one. They're going to be missing Jamar Jefferson. Let's go to Detroit running backs. Jefferson is likely to miss this week's game after missing practice on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Mo Ibrahim was released. So just Benny Snell, Divine Ozigbo behind Craig Reynolds, assuming Gibbs and Montgomery sit, which we expect to do. Uh, and Reynolds battling for that number three running back spot on this team should get a lot of work. A lot of the coaches said this shouldn't mirror last week's game, and uh, which means Craig Reynolds should play a decent amount tonight. If you're looking for a pivot, it is Divine Ozigbo. It is Benny Snell in that same backfield. Moving on to receiver, there are some groups that are going to play a lot tonight. We'll start with New England. Uh, if we assume that the starters do sit or play very sparingly, then we're going to be looking at Keyshawn Booty, who had the long touchdown last week. Trey Nixon, who has been uh, a guy that we've played a lot in preseason. In fact, we played him a lot last week. Injured his shoulder very early in the game, only played 18% of the snaps. He's been cut. So that just leaves Booty, Riley Webb, uh, Thyric Pitts, who's been getting a lot of run in practice this week, as the guys who are likely going to play a ton in this game tonight. Really, those three. Let's just put them in the lineup so we have them. Booty, Webb, and Thyric Pitts. All three of these guys should see action, so she should see ownership tonight. Uh, we side with Booty and then Pitts and then Riley Webb as the, as the third option from this group. The Chargers are going to have a lot of guys play tonight. Typically, they play the same guys that they do in preseason week two in preseason week three. Those guys are Keelan Doss. Those guys are John Hightower, let's get him in the lineup, and Terrell Bynum. These are the guys that are going to play a lot tonight for the Chargers. Next, we have the Carolina receivers who have been playing a lot. Shai Smith, Javon Wims. Derek Wright is the sneaky option. He's the guy, I know I said wait till the end of the video, but let's just give it to you now. This is my sub 10% play that's going to play a lot that no one's going to play because he missed last week. He's got the Q tag here on DraftKings. We know that if they don't play last week, if they have an injury tag, their ownership is automatically suppressed in preseason DFS. Derek Wright's a guy we like a lot. They said he's battling for a roster spot and after missing last week, should play a ton tonight. So Derek Wright's our favorite tournament receiver on the slate period, uh, but especially from this Carolina group of Smith, Wims, and... Uh, one more guy who's been playing a decent amount. LaVisca Chanel is out. Terrence Marshall's out. DJ Chark is out. Lots of guys missing uh, from this group. Let's get, uh, let's get LA out of here. Yes, Demir Bird also out. So missing a lot of guys this week. Very thin receiver group. And Derek Wright's a guy we expect to go way overlooked by the field tonight. Uh, finally, let's talk about the tight end position. Let's just get these guys in here that we like. Uh, New England, we'll put in, we'll put in Booty. And then Chargers will put in Keelan Doss. Okay, tight end. Sticking with this same group, typically for the Chargers, whoever's led in week two has led in week three the past couple of years under Brandon Staley. That is Stone Smart. He also leads that group in targets for the Chargers. Stone Smart, one of the safer plays. No real standout tight end plays tonight. If you've played every slate so far this preseason, you know that there have been a couple slates where we said, honestly, if your guy gets one or two catches, you're probably okay at tight end. That is one of those slates tonight. No one really stands out. We like Stone Smart the best. But honestly, if you play any of the guys that have been playing and they get two catches, 12 yards, you can probably win. So if you remember, there have been some slates. Quarterback doesn't matter. Tight end doesn't matter. That's tonight's slate, unless Malik Willis is the only quarterback who's going to play after Ryan Tannehill. We'll have to monitor that news. So these are the top plays for tonight. Lots of pivots, lots of high-risk plays, lots of low-owned guys. Remember last night, Atlanta's running backs, they played a half each. They scored a combined like six DraftKings points. Some other guys uh, outscored them. That's the beauty of preseason DFS. We saw those guys 50, 60% owned, and they should have been. But that doesn't mean other running backs on the suit should have been 5% owned. So take advantage of that. You don't want to play all low-owned guys in your lineup, but take a couple 
couple pivots, a couple swaps, and that's how you win the big money in preseason DFS. So if you like what you saw here, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Get notified when we go live, upload any videos. We'll have a live stream tomorrow for the Saturday slate. We're going to focus on the main game starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Sunday, we'll have a pre-recorded video for the final showdown slate of the preseason. And our daily plug, OccupyFantasy.com, our playing time notes, that'll be up by 4 p.m. Eastern today. The link is in the description below. Playing time notes and expectations for every team. Notes on legitimately every single player on the slate. Air yards, targets, snap counts, historical trends, and then finally our rankings and lineup strategies, everything you need in one spot. And that's updated all the way through the final game of the night. So if you want more information than what you saw in this video, make sure you go check that out this afternoon. So Brian Jester for Occupy Fantasy, thank you for listening to this video and good luck in tonight's Friday three-game NFL preseason DFS slate.